hashtag keep dualpreneur in business but hey do you have an ability you know something that you are really good at something that you love to do something that you already do for others and you're not getting paid for it why not monetize that skill set there's a lot of us out there that have the ability that most people don't and it's time that we take our abilities and turn it into a business so you know what i do i go into my virtual rolodex and i literally call my friends and say yo i need you to come on and we need to have a conversation or i need you to talk to my my crew and talk about these different things and so griff is no different i literally called him and said hey you're gonna do this and he said when <laughs> i did <laughs> and then she called me for two weeks and kept telling me when. When? And I was like, all right, I know when, where when is now. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Just so he doesn't forget. So, you know. And, I'm a, and like I already did. But I'm trying. I'm, I know it's a closer bench off the street. And I just don't want all these, these cars in the background. So just, I'm going to walk for a second. No um, problem. This so is always good talking to you. What I love about you is you, when I first met you, we were with Tommy Ford yep. and shooting, of course, one of his films. And the way the production and the crew just all got along, and we've been friends since, man. That's yep. that's easily a decade ago, right? Yeah, it easily. was a long, it was easily longer than that. And yeah, it's okay. probably longer than that because okay. I didn't even know you were coming. I was just gonna do the voiceover. <laughs> Right. And then he was like, oh, yeah, my boy Griff's coming in. I didn't even know who you are. I didn't even know you were famous and stuff, right? He was like, he said, he said, Griff, you're going to love her. And we was in this little closet. Ooh. It couldn't have been bigger than a closet. <laughs> right. And we had so much fun. Just just spirits connected, straight up. It was it was really fun. And then, um, you know, then you started doing your radio thing. Um and then you get with Michael, because I had met Michael online. I did a couple of his, sh his shows. And then we, because he was on your show, that's when I met him in person for the first time. Michael McFadden, that. I talked to him yesterday. He's yep. going to Bora Bora for his 50th birthday. Oh, but his okay. 50th birthday land on the weekend. The Las Vegas Raiders play the Falcons in Atlanta. And he just gave me them tickets yesterday. What? So shout out to Michael McFadden. <laughs> well, Mike, Mike was on. Mike was on the show. He did a mastermind with us. So you know, oh, I called. Good. I called the whole family. Good. You know, you know, if Tommy was still alive, he would have did it. I would have called his butt too. Tommy would have loved this online stuff and hooking mm -hmm. people together, and that's all he did, man. That's yeah. all he did. Oh, they got a nice quiet bench. Yeah. <laughs> So I wanted to have you on here to have a conversation. There's a lot of people out there. They're trying to start a business to start a side hustle and they don't know where to begin, how to begin. And my whole thing is let's start with your ability. And right. your story was really awesome because your story was you were just doing what you were good at and you turned that into a business. So I wanted you to get an opportunity to talk about your story and how you got to where you are. One, a lot of people don't know, may not know who you are, but you are a syndicated radio personality with Get Up with Erica Campbell. And you've been doing this radio thing for a very, very, very long time. You've been in movies, um, you're an actor, you're a performer, you're, been, you're international. People don't know that about my big brother. He is international. So he's done his funny stuff. <laughs> on international stages and so but he took what he was good at what his talent was and he turned it into a global business so Brooke, tell them a little bit about you and how you got started um thanks um tj i appreciate that for reals um i wanted to be a comedian since i was three years old i'm from los angeles california um i went to 21 different schools growing up I went to high school in the Bay, so I'm really from the yay and the bottom. I'm a real Cali kid. And just my mom had me when she was 15. She worked at convalescent homes. And sometimes she would say, when, when I was very young, she would put the old people in a circle. And she would say, go, go make them laugh. And, and I would, so I was on a geriatric tour for three or four years when I first... <laughs> when I first started, but then I 
But, but you know, going to all those schools, what it taught me and what I learned at a very early age is that school is a microcosm of life. It's very clicky. You know, the Mexicans be with the Mexicans, the black people, the black people, the white people, the white people, the Indians. Yeah. So what I did is I just went to all the cliques. I hung out with the cheerleader girls. I hung out with the girls in the library. I hung out with the jocks because I played sports. I helped with the special ed classes. I didn't play soccer, but I helped the coach. Uh, you know, so I, I learned real quick that, like the stoners, nobody knew what the stoners was doing. And they was like, oh, they out there smoking cigarettes and smoking weed. But the stoners was just wearing uh, them, them, what was them, the moccasin boots? They was wearing them moccasin boots with the jean jackets with the white wool on them. But all they was doing was talking about Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> like, so I just learned all these little weird things. And, and I tell people now, I just celebrated 25 years um, two weeks ago of stand-up. And, you know, 25 years of anything is a lot. It's, it's uh, it, 10 years of anything, you become a master. So I'm 25 years, man. Like now, I just feel like, like no, in November and October, I was telling my team, I don't want to do comedy no more. I did it. It's, it was awesome. And now I want to win the Nobel Peace Prize. But, but what happened is I started getting even more dates and more. So I said, okay, God, I get it. You don't want me to stop doing comedy. But, the, but I keep hearing God promising me that these next five are going to trump those 25. You know, I just um, got a TED Talk. If you don't know what a TED Talk is, that's even better. <laughs> that's even, uh, that, that makes me feel even more better. I'm glad you don't know what it is, actually. Uh, but I'm doing that in August in Wyoming. And I just feel like now um, my life trajectory is really towards, I'm an orator, you know. I'm somebody with exquisite speech. Uh, I, I'm a... I'm an author. I'm a I'm a cartoon voiceover. I'm a is I when I first started I just wanted to be a comedian, but I found that you know my problem is that I'm super duper smart. I read about eight, eleven magazines a week. I'm reading three books at one time. I'm listening to two different audio books. And the crazy part, T, is all my books I read are all leadership books. I'm a John C. Maxwell. I'm right now, I'm reading two, I'm listening to a John C. Maxwell. I'm reading a John C. Maxwell. I'm reading a book, The Art of, what is the name of that book? Um, when it's hard, um, I can't think right now, but I'm, I'm a reader, I'm a bibliophile. I love to read and I didn't go to college. I didn't go to, I'm self-taught. So. I'm, it's very important for me to know what I'm talking about. A fourth grade teacher of mine told me, so I heard you want to be a comedian. It was a substitute. She wasn't even my real teacher. And I said, yes, ma'am. She said, okay, then you need to read these books. And I was like, whoa, 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 a comedian don't know. She was like, no, comedians are smart. That's what makes them funny because they're more clever than the people they're talking to. And in front of me on that day, she gave me a Judy Bloom book. She gave me Shel Silverstein, Where the Sidewalk Ends, Dr. Seuss, and she introduced me into Mark Twain. And through those authors and through media like Saturday Night Live, I understood at a very early age that Saturday Night Live, everything that you're watching on TV while you watch Saturday Night Live, all the sketches, they were premises of a joke. So all of them were jokes. And every week, they just stress the joke a little bit more. Same premise, different people involved in a joke. So what it taught me that comedy was visual and that it, a punchline never ends. That's why even if you tell an old joke from the 30s, you can still get a chuckle from it because the punchline is never over. And my Milton Berle said in his last interview on CNN before he died with Larry King, he said, there's comics and there's comedians. And comics are people that say funny things and comedians are people that make things funny. So I'm, I'm just blessed to be a comedian. Frank Ski 
a, exe- a radio personality from Atlanta who was really in Baltimore first. He's executive producer. Tara Thomas saw me at the Improv opening up for Mark Curry in 97. And um, they were trying to get me on a radio. I had never did radio before. And they, and they kept calling me. They was paging me. That's, <laughs> that's when you had a fresh pager. It was clear. And then it, that's when the, the operator would type you and tell you what. So it wasn't just the number. It was like the whole, uh, what the person was saying. And um, I, I went on air. I, I was comedian of the year in D.C., and I got all these pages that said uh, Frank Ski done shut down 92Q in Baltimore and he wants you to call. He don't want nobody else to call except you. So I called him. He was like, man, I heard about you. Congratulations, comedian of the year. And he brought me on a show the next week. And I, I sat in with him for four days. And I didn't hear from Frank for a year and a half. Um, actually saw him twice. I saw him at this club called Hammerjacks. And he, I was like, Frank Ski, Frank. He was in VIP. I was like, Frank. Frank is funny acting, just for the record. Frank. He ain't answered me. Um, and then the second time, I got a call to open up for Frankie Beverly and Mays at the new piers, the pier in Baltimore that was just open. And I was like, how'd y'all, how'd y'all get my number? And they was like, consider it a favor from Frank Ski. And... After I'd been on this show with him, a year and a half later, he called me and said, I'm moving to Atlanta. I want you to be on the show. And for me, moving to Atlanta in November of 98, really, I had only been doing comedy three years. And now I, I didn't know B103 is the number one R&B station till I got fired. <laughs> like, I didn't know it was that big. I just knew every other day I was sitting with Luther Vandross and baby Faze and like, you know what I'm saying? And then I was doing comedy five days a week. So Atlanta is really, I stayed in Atlanta for 20 years. It was home to me. Atlanta taught me my hustle. Um, Atlanta taught me multiple streams of income. Um, I think when you move to Atlanta and you do whatever, you got to do what you aspire to do but then you got to know how to get the bread to do it too so um i love atlanta for that the south really you know being a cali dude and coming to the south and really um picking up their mentality you know a lot of people think the south is slow and they don't and some parts of it is absolutely slow but atlanta ain't it you know atlanta got more people from new york and chicago and la and stuff that that they just really integrate with this. And just because they slow in Atlanta don't mean they dumb. They actually are very intentional with their workings, you know, and I learned that. And um, just, I mean, I remember when Kasim worked for the record label, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I, I don't know how long you've been in uh, Atlanta, the three of you, but y'all remember uh, Chili Peppers on Tuesday and Buckhead? Yeah. Man, man. Every uh, and then you know, I'm I'm trying to call people and say, dog, you don't understand. Every TLC is here, Usher is here, <laughs> Jermaine Dupri is here, like you know, Outcast is here. Uh, um, so I I learned everything in Atlanta radio. You know, I never went to school for radio or anything. Is it, it just I'm I'm already blessed with timing. A lot of people think my gift is comedy and you make people laugh. But really, my gift is timing. I have, I have, I have meticulous timing, and comedy is just proof. And a lot of people think it's just on stage, but my whole life, I've always been on a plane next to the dude who owned such and such, and five months later, he called me and bring me in, or I'm at a park sitting next to somebody whose son owned a studio and CB, like it's. It's, it's my life. Like, it's not a coincidence no more. So I went from Frank Ski to Hot 107.9 in Atlanta, which is really weird because normally they don't let the people from one radio station go to another radio station in the same city. And But it was just because the timing, Ryan Cameron had went back to V103 at the time, you know what I'm saying? And it left a wide open spot in uh, Hot 107.9 in 
what year was that? Oh, five. And then in 08, in August, Ricky Smiley became syndicated and he took over all the morning show, uh, the local morning show. So, you know, Charlotte had a morning show, Richmond had a morning show, Detroit had a morning show, but then they just syndicated Ricky Smiley on all of the Radio One affiliates. So then Erica Campbell, you know, this go back to V103 and seeing Erica, I got there when Shackles came out. So she had to come on V103. Yeah, tell, tell people who Erica Campbell is for those that may not know who Erica Campbell is. Eric Campbell, Erica Campbell is the Grammy Award winning artist and half of the duo Mary Mary. Um, her husband put her and her sister together. It's her sister, Tina Campbell, that's in the group with her. She got about seven Grammys, a thousand stellar awards, some American Music Award. I've been on the radio with her now. We actually celebrate four years on Monday. Like it's been four, four years already? It's been four years. Four I remember years when y'all made Monday. the announcement. I yeah, remember that when you made yeah. the announcement. Yeah, that Cinco de Mayo. Remember, it was right, Cinco yep. de Mayo 2016. So, um, and to be around a lady, like for example, and we've been on the air 217 weeks. In two in four years, Erica Campbell has released 12 singles. Like she 12 singles, three TV shows. Like her hustle is is magnanimous. Like it it her and her husband, like in the morning, she'll be like, dun -dun 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 hey, hold on, y'all, I'll be right back. And then her and her husband will go produce a, a hook real quick like it's crazy and to be around that it's hard to 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 not want to 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 not you know my prayer was always lord put me around people who will understand my genius like i hate that i don't want to downplay it like put me around i don't want to i want to i want to be around people who get it and to do this for four years man and then to still do comedy. And when I go to South Africa, um, when all this is over, it'll be my 35th time going in the last 11 years. I am the uh, first American to tape Comedy Central Africa. Um, you know, and, and internationally, between y'all, I'm gonna say it now, I'm moving to, I'll be moving to Johannesburg, like from October to April, I'll be in, that spring, summer, fall for them. And then I'll come back to America April to October with the spring, summer, fall for us. And basically that'll be uh, Birkenstocks and button up Hawaiian shirts for the rest of my life. Like that's, was that so, too much? Was that a lot? No, that's a lot. <laughs> but still, yeah. But let's talk about the fact that, you know, when you decided you wanted to be a comedian, not just a, a, a comedian, when did you say, now I need to figure out how to monetize this? How do I, you know, at what point did you realize yeah. that you can monetize this? Well, saying you want to be a comedian and being the funniest person and class clown, but it was on April 14th or April 13th of 1995, my best friend Mimi Morlock brought me to the Laurel Comedy Connection in Maryland. And we had talked for like a year and a half. I was like, I'm going to be a comedian now. And she was like, I'm sick of you talking about it. Let's go somewhere. And then she took me to this comedy club. And the club held about 300 people. But it was only nine people there on this particular night, including me and Mimi, some waitresses, uh, you know what I'm saying, and the comedian. Uh, the comedian was Kevin Lee. And Kevin Lee is like a black carrot top, like somebody who got a chest of different things. And he pulled them out. Well, on this particular night, the airline lost his chest. So he kept saying, oh man, if I had my chest, then I would say such and such. So after hearing that three times, I just yelled out, yeah, we know if you had your chest. And he was like, oh, you want a Joan? And I was like, yeah, I always want a Joan. I always want to just cap on people. So me and him went back and forth and, and the people laughed. And I started the next day. And it took me two years before I got, it was at Monique's Comedy Club in Baltimore in January um, of 07. 
that I got my first money and she gave me $300 for doing seven shows with um, JB Smooth, who is now on The Last OG and Curb Your Enthusiasm and you know what I'm saying? Crown Royal commercials and some more stuff. And I remember holding that $300 with tears in my eyes. It was an envelope that just said Griff, real small in it. And when I was, I'm like, man, God, you talk. And this homeless dude was like, hey, brother. And I said, hey, I'm trying to have a moment. He was like, my bad, my bad. And I was like, God, you said I could be. And now I'm making that. And then, and then I gave the brother $20. And that's really, in the end, of everything that I do over these 25 years, I'm a, I'm a giver. So I'm always get. I'm a, I'm a always, as long as I, I, I've been blessing people when I didn't have anything. So I'm always be taken care of. I can, I can attest to that. You are a giver. Um, you've always been that way from the first day I met you because, um, and, and Tommy was the same way. Tommy was just a, a giver, whatever he could give. And he just had a good heart. And that's what I akin to you. You just always had a good heart. And you've always given me opportunities. You know what I'm saying? When you had an opportunity or a chance to give me an opportunity, you always cut me in. Um, yeah. And so, and that's what I love about you is that you, you look out for your people, whether, you know, Michael McFadden, me or whatever, you just have that heart. Cause who give. else going to give us a shot? Like who else? Like if I'm on a syndicated morning show or just hot 1079 or V 103 and they say, man, we need to do something about money. I know a girl. Like, and then the fact, but this is the best part. I know a girl who's ready. That's the difference. Mm -hmm. Cause you could know, I mean, hell, uh, Tam is a singer. I know a bunch of people who sing, but I, I wouldn't pick all of them to sing. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, it's, it, you gotta know. And, and people, and here, here's what's funny is people always say, it's all about who you know, but truly, it's, 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 it's really about who knows you. Right. Because I could get a phone call and somebody could say, hey, what's up with uh that Miss Mad Money chick? Is she good? I'm going to be like, hell yeah. And they're going to say, all right. And, or they're going to say, hey, what's up with Tara Jackson? I'm gonna, is she sweet? Hell no. Nah. She did something with me and she sucked. <laughs> and, and, it's, and it's that quick in our business. Mm -hmm. And you'll never get the phone call that said, Hey, you know what? We was gonna pick you for something, and you know what I'm saying it just so it's and it's all repetition. It's like it's like when Tam come on, she's gonna tell you it's all microphone memory. It's repetition. When she sings, she know how she gonna start, and then it just happens. Whatever else happens, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like you come out and say, Baltimore, how are you? And then whatever else something takes over us, you know, a lot of times I get off stage, I don't know what I said. I'll be really asking people what I said, like what part You're right. was funny. You're right. like, I, can, I can attest to that because especially when I do my speaking engagements, most yeah. of it is impromptu. I, because I'll write something down, but I'll get to fill the room. And so then I'll go out and I'll say some really clever stuff. And when I get off the stage, I don't know what the hell I said, but they like it. The, and the best part about that is, it's because you do it, you've done it over and mm -hmm. over and over. So with, 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 I'm going to say this, and this will be weird to people who don't understand, but as a creative, we kind of check out when we on stage. Like we kind of, sometimes I just find myself looking at myself going, that's real good, Griff. Make sure you do the one. And it's just, like, it's a very surreal out of body experience that you have that you because at the same time you're talking about yeah somebody said you'd be in the zone but the zone is you know it's such a it's such a crazy magical special thing that happens it's a, it's when a you euphoric it's a euphoric type yeah of, and nobody uh, understands like a singer what i and i work with so many bands man the drummer and the the keyboard dude and the sax, they don't, they ain't never met each other. They know one song and then the rest be an hour and a half later of, yo, you can't even explain it. You just gotta say, was you there on that Wednesday when so-and-so came through? And I think that's the gift. You know what I'm saying? That's what you can't, it's no price for that. It's no price 
And so it's no, what it's I no found, price for that. What I found out, what I realized is that everybody has that a certain gift that makes them feel a euphoric moment. Whether everybody doesn't though. Let's really? stop lying. No, really? Everybody don't. Somebody got to be a construction worker. Somebody well, got to be a janitor. But wait a minute. Somebody got to be a, and it's nothing no, no, wrong. What I'm saying, what I'm saying is you have an ability, you have a talent that you're good at that can put you in that moment. Um, so, and to find that ability and talent. Now I'm not saying everybody's a comedian. Okay. I'm not I get saying it. I get it. No, no, no. I know what you mean. Whatever yeah. someone does, they do it. You could be a dry cleaner person. Right. And once you start getting them clothes in, yeah, I get it. Yeah, you're right. I feel you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's just so you got to be able to take that ability to be in a zone. You don't have to. I can't play basketball. I can't play, you know, mm -hmm. but I know I talk for a living. That's, that's, I'm an orator, man. Like, that's it. If they had a million dollar contest on who can make the best website, I'm not even going to give them my email address. I'm not a, even in my best website attempt, it's going to look like a fifth grader did it. You know what I'm saying? Because that's not my lane. Um, but if they said, hey, we need uh, you to do five minutes in front of 10 people, I mean, I'm going to win. Like, I'm going to win. I, I, I believe is I have so much confidence in my words. Like, that's, you know, we was playing with Tara, uh, Tam off air, and I was like, stop being low self-esteem. And she was like, I'm not, it's the problem with LSC, low self LSC is what my mama call it. Um, everybody's LSC comes out until you tell them about it. So somebody be like, hey, Griff, can I chop it up with you when you get a chance? So then I call, I call them and they go, hey, man, well, I know you're busy and I, man, I ain't trying, you know, I'm trying to, I'm trying to put this, you know, some, yeah, I, it probably won't, it, you know, I don't want to hear that low, man. I want off the phone. I can't do it. I can't do it. You got to, if you don't believe, oh, I'm going to believe. Mm -hmm. That's why people get booed. The crowd know you're not good. It don't have nothing to do with nothing else. The crowd can see your fear. You know what I'm saying? So, if the crowd can see it, man, hey, hey, get him out of here. One person say that, they go 300 random people. I think everybody should get booed. I think accountants should get booed. I think chefs should get booed. I think principals should get booed because it's only two things that's going to happen after you get booed. You're going to hate that feeling so much that you're going to promise yourself that you're never going to get booed again or you're going to quit. And either way, I don't care. Quit then. So don't just because somebody told you it was funny when you was a kid, man, this is real. My and kids you know is. What? My, that's absolutely right. Because I remember the first, when I got booed, I was in high school and I was running for an office. And this was before I really got into my oratorical stage. And I just got up there and I fumbled and I didn't say the right things. And that whole crowd just blew, blew the shit out of me, right? Oops, sorry. <laughs> blew, blew me, right? And that feeling. Don't it suck? <laughs> Don't it suck so bad? But that listen, feeling. So for comedians, they be having to drive home going, man, I don't know if I can do this or not. Right. And you have to do that until you get on another stage. Yep. Like uh, if well, you get booed, right because if you get booed at 9 p.m., you want to get on a stage at 10 15 to get that boo off of you. Right. You want it off of you immediately. And I think all creatives, ah, I had an okay show. You want to go have a good show fast. Exactly. Just so you can, because how we think, we start talking to ourselves. Well, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. you the one who said that. Uh, yeah. You know, so well, that was I when think I decided I was never going to get booed like that ever again. Yeah, I who was the never going to get, get caught not at least sounding like I knew what I was talking about. And that, that made me. you say, I'm going to know what I'm talking about exactly. when I stand in front of people. Exactly. And that's the difference between somebody who wants this life and somebody who sees this life. I see a whole, I don't have a car on purpose. I hate driving. Um, but I, I can see people with nice cars and go, man, I like that. I like that car for that dude. I don't I don't have hate in my heart saying, why he got a Jag? Why he got a Maserati? Like, I'd be happy for fuck. What's that? Look at this little dog. Hey, little buddy. Hey, little buddy. Hey, little buddy. Hey. Hey. 
I know he looked like a human being in the face. Look at his dog. Aww. Remember the shaggy DA? Remember yeah. all that? And Chris Good attention boy. span. Good boy. So short. Yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry. Oh god. Yeah. Squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the puppy. <laughs> So, Griff, tell tell some people if they have a, an idea, if they have a, an ability, what are some suggestions you would have to help them to consider monetizing or figuring out the best way to do that? I I'm a visualizer. I you know they call it daydreaming when when it it's daydreaming when it don't happen. It vis is a you visualize when it happens. So I visualize myself hosting the Grammys and I and I and my visualization isn't just if you just visualize for five minutes a day and let that five minute turn into 11 or 13 minutes but just sit back close your eyes and go man I'm a host of Oscars when you say that then you got to start seeing it and then you have to see it in great detail. If I say I want to be on the Jimmy Kimmel show, I have to then start thinking, what does the green room look like? Is it carpet? Is it hardwood? Is there a coat rack on the back of the door? Is it a TV behind me? Is it a couch behind me? What color is the couch? What kind of seat am I sitting in? Is it a swivel chair? Is it a chair with wheels? What am I writing with? What does it smell like? How bright are the lights? Can I feel the heat? When you can see it that clear, when that person comes in and says, Griff, you're on in five minutes. When, you, when I do get on Jimmy Kimmel, I will have known what that lady looks like. And when I got on Get Up Mornings with Erica Campbell, I had visualized it so much that I knew what the building was going to look like. Uh, it was a glass building with swivel, with the, with the roundabout doors. And I saw it. I had already saw it. And, and, and then, you know, I, I thank God for vision. I'm a visionary. God, it's not a coincidence. You know what I'm saying? But it's very important for you to slow down, meditate, think about what you want to do, write it down, get a journal, keep saying it to everybody. Man, if you ask anybody I grew up with, and I went to so many schools, I really don't see these people or hear from them until I'm on Facebook or something. And they'll say, he has been saying he was going to be a comedian since he was second grade, first grade. Or, you know, Tam been singing since she was five. Erica been singing since she was four or five. You know, it's, and that's the difference. You know what I'm saying? Um, I, I, I just, I want it, man. You know what I'm saying? I saw dysfunction growing up and I didn't want it in my life. I heard God tell me when I was nine, all generational curses stop with you. Your kids will never know or see what you went through. I promise you. So for God to keep his promise, and I'm trying not to cry, uh, but for God to keep his promise to me um, all these years, and even in this coronation, man, people getting fired, people, hell of radio people been getting fired, and God kept me. You know, God, God, yes, uh, God is faithful, but, but not only is he faithful, but he don't forget. So the, 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 the little girl that he said, I'm going to make sure I'm going to help you to be able to not bomb again. And through that, you had to become smart through that. You had to learn, you had to sit under. You know, don't be so proud that you can't sit under somebody. Um, it's very, you know, black people, uh, other nationalities do it all the time. They become apprentice. Um, they, you know, if you if you want to be a great leader, you got to help a leader, hold a leader's bag. You got to drive a leader around. You got to... Uh, do whatever a leader say because he's already proved it. He don't have to prove it to you. So get under somebody. I tell kids all the time. I ask them, what you want to be for a living? They all say, I only, I only recognize the kid that say, I want to be a lawyer. I want to be a football player. And I want to be a, a judge. Yes. 
It's school that told us. School did it in kindergarten when they told us we only, what, what's your favorite color? Red. Y'all tell kids all the time, what's your favorite color? They say green, blue, yellow. I say, ask me what my favorite color is. I like red. I like orange. I like brown. I like teal. I like turquoise. I like green. Sometimes I like the black and the silver and the white or a polka dot. Like school did that to us. You can like, you can want to be more than one thing. That's why when I kept saying, I'm going to be a comedian, I'm going to be a comedian, I'm going to be a comedian. Yes, I became that, but I left out. I want to be wealthy. I want to. I want to not be stressed. I want to not live at people's house. I want to pay my bills. I want to have good credit. So you got to be very specific what you speak, what you speak, because volume, words, it's a thousand million molecules that come out in a vibration that your ear picks up. And not only do they come out, but they also come out on video and everything else. So your words are important. So you have to be very intentional with what you say about yourself. If you walk to your mailbox and say, I ain't nothing in there but bills, it will. Ask me what I say when I walk to my mailbox every day. What you say? What random check am I about to get from something I did 10 years ago? Well, that's the law of attraction. Exactly. Absolutely. Don't get me started on the law of attraction. Law of attraction I, 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 just like I hear contract. you on Abraham. I hear you on Abraham uh, and a whole bunch of other stuff. But yeah, it's the, the, the thing is, you, you have to want what you want so bad that you rather die. If I can't talk for a living, I, I want to die. I want to go to heaven and be with Jesus and be the first angel that make Jesus snorkel laugh <laughs> like that. So that's my end game. So, I want him to say, man, dad, this angel got me wanting to resurrect myself again. He's so funny over here. So Griff, <laughs> when, you got a lot of things going on. How can people follow yeah. you and continue to listen to you? And definitely with Erica Campbell. Um, and I'm at two trillion on everything. The number two, the word trillion. Um, you can hear me every morning, Monday through Friday. I'll get up mornings with Erica Campbell. Uh, that's getupericacom Check your local listings. I actually love saying that. I've been practicing saying check your local listings since I was a fifth grader. Um, but, but, you know, depending on what city you're in, we're in about 44, 46 cities around the country. Um, and just inspiring people in the morning. You know, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm pushing Jesus on anybody. I'm just telling people what he did for me. You know what I'm saying? When you get to a place and you can say, you know, I'm just, I'm grateful. I'm thankful. I'm blessed. My kids is fine. My ex-wives are cool. Wow. You know what I'm saying? I'm in such a great spirit just to be able to sit out here and, and appreciate all oh, what God made. Look at these trees. Look at these leaves. Look how they green. Look how, you know, it rained earlier and you wouldn't even know right now. Like, look at God. Look at what God does. This don't have nothing to do with man. This is what our creator. Look how he wake you up every morning and give you hearing to hear your alarm clock, give you sight to see if you need to press snooze again. And nobody is, it ain't no tubes hooked up to you. It ain't nobody helping you walk. Like, man, I sit on the edge of my bed and I just start saying, it's about, it's about to be the best day ever. Watch. And I say, and I hype myself up and you can't turn that off. I, that's my spirit all day till I go to sleep. Then I wake up and I do the exact same thing. Man, he woke me up. Woo, what I'm about to do in the with this woke upness, watch me. So at two trillion you know, on everything. Um, I'm not, don't book me before August because I ain't coming. Um, I'm staying in my house all of May. I'm not getting on a plane until July. Uh, I got a nice plan for myself. I'm cool. I'm not driving. I fly every weekend. I'm not going to start driving. I'm just not going to get up. Listen, y'all, y'all, y'all play the coronavirus soft if you want to. Y'all, y'all, but I know I got a one mile radius of covering on me. If they get to shooting at the Walmart, I'm going to be the dude 
walking with my AirPods in, listening to gospel music when they show the video back. Like, if a plane crashed, I will walk away with no scratch. That's just how I feel. Like, that's my spirit. But I'm not going to take my chance out here with these folks. I got masks for days. You understand me? Hey, I'm with you on that <laughs> one. I ain't messing with the corona. I don't mess with karma, and I don't mess with corona. I leave man. them alone. Man, man. Tara, thank you, man. Thank you for being yeah. consistent. Um, thank you for just always finding ways to do you. That's why I had to say, yeah. I, I, and my real problem is I don't know how to say no to people who I love um, because after you, damn it, man, I think I got another one of these in four minutes and I still ain't home. So uh, I'm to the crib. Um, Tara, I love you. Tam, I'm about to listen to you guys. Queen V, um, I, I love the solidarity that the creatives have. You know what I'm saying? We in a whole different, I mean, ain't no union for us. You know what I'm saying? It ain't no, you know, we ain't got no medical program. So we got to be cool. We got to be close. We got to know a doctor. Hey, I got a doctor on me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like we, we got to have these kind of hookups, if you will, because it's, you know, you don't know what somebody, Tam, I'm sure you'll be able to attest to this. If somebody see you sing and they fall in love with your voice, you don't know what that person to do for you. You don't know. You don't know if that person say, hey, man, I ain't trying to bother you. I saw you six years ago. I'm a fan. I'm about to move somewhere. I got this mansion. If you want it, it's yours. I, don't, I mean, you know, that's my life. Like, that's, that's my life. Like, I gave, man, thank you, Jesus. Wow. Yeah. That's my life, for real. Well, Griff, That's I, know you have to, I know you have to leave. Um, if anybody has any questions, put them in the comments. We'll make Griff yeah, answer them later. But I know you got another interview that you have to hop on. Just thank you so much for Are making. we allowed to say hi or bye yes. before you go? <laughs> <Say> hi. <laughs> hi All right. This is, look, Griff, this is what you've got to know about me that you don't know. I am a professional pianist who sings also. Okay. No, I know you play first. I know. Okay. That's very, just very important. Say, just because you can say pianist, I know you're a real one. <laughs> what a piano player. She's a pianist. Yes, yeah, she's a piano yes. player. If you're a piano player, you're not a pianist. No. <laughs> no, piano you are a pianist. I am a piano a player. Pianist. I am not a pianist. <laughs> you guys are cracking me up. I just had to say that, but Griff, you know, I, look, I took five pages of notes, okay? Wow. So I got some wow. good stuff from you. We'll talk offline because I want there's okay. some more stuff I want to say. But thank you so much. And to you, Tara, too. Thank you thank so you much. Too. And it's Queen right. B and the other young lady, Rosh Hashanah. Yeah. I'm so sorry if I said something wrong. Yeah, she's on here. So you had a whole team up in here. And everybody's yeah. watching live, too. So um, Yeah, nice to meet y'all. We would you normally so open up for questions, but I know you got to. I can wait. Come on. I'll wait. I'll do it Does for you. Does anyone see? have any questions for Griff or like to share or anything with Griff? Queen B, I love your background. Is that Malcolm X or like your father in the back? On your left. Probably on your left. It's Malcolm. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. All right. Nice. Did you, oh, hey, I do Queen have... B, did you see uh, Godfather of Harlem? Wasn't the dude yes. that played Malcolm X? Yes. The dude that played Malcolm to me need to get the best supporting Ooh. actor Golden Globe. He, yo, he looked like Malcolm, sound like Malcolm, dude. I, I, I was back. more caught up in him than I was Forrest Whitaker. And then what's his name playing Elijah Muhammad? I was I said, okay, yeah. Epics ain't playing. That was I'm sorry, y'all. Harlan, I'm if you so, haven't seen it, I'm Godfather of Harlan. For, I'm still waiting for Godfather Harlan to come back for the next season. It's going to be a minute. Everybody shut down. Well, you yeah. see how they did Insecure last week. They tried to play a podcast like nobody was going to notice. <laughs> Y'all ain't play episode four. <laughs> Sam, you had, a question. you had a question for Griff. Um, oh, the only thing I was going to say is um, I also, it was something you said. When you were talking about being intentional, um, and the visualization, I do that a lot. Like, I would love to have a Grammy and I've envisioned myself walking up. Who am I going to thank? You know, how I'm going to hold it in my hand. Am I going to pass it to the person next to me? You know, the superstar that gave me the Grammy. So Absolutely. I like how you, I really like how you talked about the detail. 
because I have not gone that deep into detail. You know, no, what I mean? you got to, and you and you especially because you play music, so you know the very fine, intricate, in between. You know what I'm saying? Like you, mm -hmm. it's very important for you to see it all the way. Like you got to see it from what you're gonna wear, who you're gonna bring with mm -hmm. you, what you're gonna have in your car, how are you gonna go. What are you going to wear on a red carpet? And then what are you going to actually wear on the thing? Where are you going to sit? What kind of cologne you go, perfume you going to have on? What kind? So when I say in the details, and it might sound crazy, and guess what? It don't sound crazy I'll to be me. Crazy because <laughs> if you, if you, I keep saying I'm going to win a Nobel Prize, I'm going to be the first comedian to win the Nobel Peace Prize. I will be. And Man, it's not going to be in 10 and 15, 20 years. It's going to be hella. It's going to be very soon. I mean, the so. visualization thing is very real because for a long time, I said, I'm going to be on a Ricky Smiley morning show, right? And I just said it. Didn't know how. Sometimes when you say it, you don't know how, and it's not your issue. You're yeah. supposed to not know how. Exactly. Not how, right? You're not supposed to know how. If you right. start saying, man, I want, a, I want a red Corvette. And if you start saying, I ain't got no money. I'm always riding a bus. Mm -hmm. Every time I try to... You killed your whole, you killed it yourself. Nobody put a gun in your head. You did that to yourself. You just supposed to keep seeing yourself in a red Corvette. Exactly. How you, how you going to get out? What kind of music you going to play in your bed? And, like, and, you know and that's true because how I got on the show was, it was su supernatural. It had to be supernatural. It was not a way I thought I probably would get on the show. Because you look like Miss Juicy? No. You know what? Oh, if I could smack you. I'm not even going anyway, I'm not talking to you anymore. Um, Rashana had a question. Rashana says, How do you maintain your support systems as you grow in your profession? Her daughter wanted That's to really ask. good. That's really good. Um, you know how they say you gotta keep your circle small. My circle is the tittle. If you don't know what the tittle is, it is the dot above the J and the I. That's how small my circle is. I don't mess with everybody. I really don't. My family know too. My family, my my fa you know, I left home when I was 15. So my family used to send me about 14 months, every 14 months, every, like we don't, I don't, I don't play games. I'm focused. I got stuff to do. I don't want to, I, I really, I, I really am doing me, you know, and, you're like, supposed and I think, Sometimes I your support when you, system is not even your family. Sometimes the support. Oh no, my support system ain't my family at all. Like my support system is people I know I can call, and um, I like people smarter than me. I'm a I'm a big advocate. Of, I don't want to be the smartest dude in the room, and it doesn't hurt my feelings. You know what I'm saying? Because I could take away one sentence of something you said, and I I hold on to that for a decade. So uh, when you talk about support systems and, and for the young lady that asked, what you have to know right now in school, you're going to have 20 friends, 25, 31. <laughs> but when you get older, ask your mama how many friends you got. I mean, you start having four, six, you know, three that, if, you know, three that you really could, you know. So I think you... I love who love me, but I know everybody love me, so that's tough. Um, and that and that sound arrogant. That sound like a Virgo. Yeah, I'm a Libra, so you know, I don't you're know what you're talking about. Yes. You are, yeah, then you're right. Everybody does love you because I love everybody. Them. Do love me, and if they don't, in my mind, they do. And you don't, you ain't been around me long enough, and you don't love me yet. As soon as you be around me, watch the love come. <laughs> Because <laughs> I love my Libras, boy. Try to tell you. I love my Libras. Y'all some smart. Yeah, yeah, y'all are smart too. You know, I'm it's 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 funny because the Libra, I don't know if y'all in the horoscope, if you will say, uh, the devil is a well, I can't Jesus know I was born on September 30th. And according to where I was born, uh, it makes me a Libra. Uh but the the Libra sign is the only sign out of the 12 horoscope signs that ain't nothing. And everything needs air. My parents are Aries, uh, which is fire sign. My mom is April 5th. My dad is April 9th. I'm technically their opposite. 
but everything needs air. If you put a little bit of oxygen into some fire, you get a nice warm uh, fireplace fire. You put too much, you burn down California. Uh, all water needs oxygen. Uh, all earth and ground needs air. So basically, I'm cool with everybody. I don't have no fun. I don't have no fun with nobody. And that's just how, when I realized that, when like a real horoscope person sat down with me and was telling me, I was like, oh, that's why I'm like that. Oh, okay. And then because I'm an air sign, I always know how to leave too. I know how to slip out. You can shut the doors and lock the windows, but it's always a crack that I could get out. And I think that's how I look at comedy. I give myself about 31 outs from something. So if one don't work, I got another one, I got another one, I got them. I, I got at least seven of them before I can get your attention back, before I gotta start digging deep. But that I think that's what it is, being an air sign. And if you don't know anything about astrology, don't worry about it. It's nothing, it's, <laughs> um, it's dumb. It's, it's nothing until it's something. Until, man, <laughs> but I, I look at it like this, the same way, like I don't be reading Libra books, like I don't care, I don't read them already, uh, uh, but the same way, the same way you know astrology, the same way you know the five love languages, the same way you know if a person is an AB personality, the same way if somebody is an introvert or extrovert, eventually, eventually it all makes the person you know what i'm saying it, it it eventually makes the person like your book the uh your the the money languages like once you figure out who you are then you can be like oh oh my dad was mean and he ain't he wasn't he wasn't affectionate because he wasn't a touch love language his was works i worked and you live somewhere i ain't gotta be your friend like, you know, and once you know the five love languages, then you can put it to your family. You can put it to your friends. You can say, oh, she like touch. He need words of affirmation. I don't, she like gifts, you know. So, it, it I, again, that's just yeah, reading a lot. Okay. What happened? No, it was just uh, some sound. It's okay. Oh, okay. Right, yeah, so. so. Um, uh, if there's, does anyone else have any more questions? And she said, perfect. Her daughter was a freshman in college. And that's very important to understand um, who your real support system is. Oh, uh, man, you a freshman in college, do you? Like, everybody going to be doing them. Do you right now? Because they sophomore year going to suck because they was doing too much. They saw, And I ain't even go to school. I got kids. If you don't concentrate, if you don't keep them same ethics that you had your senior year, and treat your freshman year, pretend like if you don't finish your freshman year with high grade, you could get kicked out of school. Let that be your motivation. Don't be tripping off of people learning how to drink for the first time. You got your rest of your life to learn how to drink. And I know it's easier said than done, but once you throw up a couple times, why would you keep getting drunk? Like, I don't, I don't understand it. <laughs> <laughs> You better concentrate. Okay. I'm big on I'm big on education, man. Because I didn't go. Because I didn't I didn't have any formal training from nothing. So um, you know, if you don't if you if you go on to school to learn and you're not learning, that kind of make you dumb to me. Uh, All right. Anybody else have any other questions before we let Griff do him while we got him? Well, that's good, Griff. Boom, boom, master class. You, She's a physics and civil engineer major. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, hey, hey, come on, mom. Come on, mom. I had a, my son took the PSAT from Duke when he was a seventh grader. Uh, Could have went to any college in the entire planet. Uh, let the drum major from FAMU come to Westlake and uh, just turned him out. He went, he had the presidential scholarship uh, to be a chemical engineer at FAM and got kicked out of college. The dude never got a B plus in his whole life. And he was like, dad, I just couldn't, I couldn't even wake up, man. <laughs> and the only reason I wasn't mad at him because I ain't paid for nothing. If you want to like that, listen, so I get it. Hey, tell her to concentrate 
She's going to have a lot of time to play. You concentrate now, you can skip your senior year. How about that? Mm-hmm. And that's the year you want to get crazy and skip. Woo! Yeah, because you did all the hard part. You did all the yeah, hard work. And you yeah. want to rest. Trust me. All right, y'all. Well, I want to thank everyone for tuning in today. We um, normally uh, would run down the list of what we do and everything, but put it in the chat or go into the Facebook group. Join the Facebook group. Share who you are and your business. Um, we would love to do that. Uh, we got to get off right now, but Griff, thank you again. Thank you, Michelle, Roshana, Queen B, um, and everybody that's watching. Thank you all so much for joining us for our Friday Night Live edition. Griff, it was a great conversation. I love you, man. I love you too, sweetheart. Tam, you take care. Queen B, uh, the, the physics uh, smart girl. Don't let them call you. Let them call you a nerd. Say, yep, I'm a nerd. Yeah. I so am. I sure am about to be a nerd till I die. Tell them that. Nerds is in. Okay. It's the, and guess who called people nerds? Dumb people. Dumb people. <laughs> Dumb people. I'm going to be a nerd. The last time I checked, bit. nerds make a lot of money. Look, she just said a $100,000 salary nerd. Exactly. Yep. exactly. I'll be that nerd all the way you to the You guys stay blessed. Thank All you right, y'all. I love you. There's nothing you can do about it. Don't forget out there see? in COVID land, wash them hands. <laughs> I'll see y'all.